Hello, congregation. Welcome today. I am Brother Pruitt, of course, and this is Brother Jim. Today, we are talking about the higher powers and the vessels in between. Can I get an amen? Today, we are talking about faith and how you leave it at the door because your devotion is enough. Can I get an amen? Today, mm -hmm. we are talking about the good book, and we are going to turn to page 127 to talk about what is past that being the acolyte, can I get an amen? Can I, mm, mm, mm. Jim? Can I can I get an amen? Like, can I just get one? Uh, amen. Were Were you raised Baptist? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, well, in the case, let's talk about priest concepts today on WebDM. This episode is sponsored by Dungeon Fog, the online map maker and authoring tool for game masters. Save yourself hours of time, generate awesome maps of buildings, rooms, dungeons, and more with GM notes, and share, print, or export them with just a few clicks. There are thousands of ways to customize, and they're adding more all the time. Starting May 4th, they're releasing their redesigned marketplace, which expands the maps available and gives users way more free options. And if you're not a subscription person, now you can purchase and download any maps you want as you go plus new augmented reality cards and more. If you make maps, you've got to check it out. Go to dungeonfog.com slash webdm for more info and get 10% off annual subscription using the code webdm. Link in the description. Okay, Jim. Um, so let's, let's, let's talk about priests. Let's talk about the healers, the casters, the clerics, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and let's talk about the concepts thereof. Yeah. Um, let's do it. I've played more than a few clerics in my day. Uh, I've played them a couple of different ways. But um, one thing I will say is I've never played one who thought that they were the chosen one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, but that is one way that you can play it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I've played a vessel of a higher power before with El Vadin in a low magic world. But he saw mm -hmm. it more as a curse it, it, that yeah. his life because he was looked down upon. But that mm -hmm. is, I mean, like, when you're talking about cleric concepts, what is, yeah. where does your mind start? I, I mean, I really do start to think of this, like, the vessel of a higher power, chosen one, especially with the way, like, D&D &D magic and D&D &D, uh, religion and the gods all sort of work in a standard world. It's like, it makes sense that the cleric is like, the, like this, you know, whether or not they're the only one <laughs> that has been chosen by their God, that they've been selected somehow, e either through a happenstance of birth or or by their deeds or something, for like this this interaction, this devote, this exchange of, of of power and and devotion and the like between the God and the mortal, and and you know, it's you can go with a lot of different classes on this one. This could be mm -hmm. you know any number of. Uh, of mechanical expressions but just like the idea of someone who's like no my god has invested in me a part of their power and like i could embrace it i could not i can you know rebel against it or, or use it for wicked ends or, or for ends that they don't, don't like but like i am I like this close relationship with a deity and like honestly when i think of a character like this my favorite version has got to be captain cisco from deep space nine Right. Like my favorite one oh, of just sort of yes. like I've been invested with a higher beings authority and and I have a I have a part in their plan or something like. But I'm also got this I also got this whole other thing going on. And I might not be comfortable with <laughs> with this whole prophet status over here, chosen one and the like, all these people who my every word is recorded and analyzed and mm -hmm. interpreted and, and the like. Like I'm just trying to do my job. And so there's that yeah. angle on it, uh, or you could like go all in and embrace it, like uh, you know, later season Cisco. Well, well I definitely uh, the, bringing up the idea of, of Cisco being like that's your idea for a cleric, where you're a cleric of a deity that you had no idea of until you came to this land, and sure. now everyone around you knows exactly who they are. You don't really know, but you still are invested with this. I mean that that is rife for. And much like Deep Space Nine, it's rife for like inner inner uh, religious politics and interplay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, intrigue, suspense. I mean, like all of it. It's 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 you you are literally priming the pump uh, from your character creation uh, 
to just be like, yeah, I want to be a conflict by the, by the believer, <laughs> the, the believers of the faith that I represent, you know, they will harass me sometimes. Yeah. Whereas yeah. some of them will love me. And so uh, that is yeah. an interesting way to come about it. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoy it. A lot, a lot of ways to play it. You know, they don't have to necessarily be an outsider. They could be someone who was brought up within a particular God's hierarchy or, you know, mm-hmm. or priesthood. They could, I mean, they could not have any mechanical connections to, to it at all. And just sort of this comes through in, in just the story of the character and how, you know, how you present them and their interaction with the world and, you know, how much you and your DM work to, to incorporate this into a campaign. But yeah, the chosen ones, someone was like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to, um, to to be this god's mm-hmm. ambassador or, or their their you know their like i work their will uh in the world and i think it's really cool and adds a dimension to D religion that um that starts to like make it a bit more complex and nuanced and and interesting you know mm-hmm. well that's that's freaking awesome uh and speaking of chosen ones I don't know if you uh, follow any Patreons, but I hope that WebDM will be the chosen one for you, where you can come and get a podcast every week. It's not too expensive, uh, and you can support WebDM and all of our our uh, variety of things moving forward. So uh, go check that out from Patreon.com. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's move on. So what's your what's what's the next uh, concept that you wanna you wanna uh, to gaze upon here? Yeah, so so the next one here for me is a it, it's kind of like taking the idea that the gods exist in a D&D world and there's really not a place for faith as a 21st century person understands it speaking most for myself right like faith is because in some sense it's like like i, I have proof they don't really need faith and yeah. for, for a priest someone who has potential to be in contact with their god like if that faith is less important than just devotion and trust i think is probably the most you know, important thing like I trust that this being is what they say they are and, and will do what they say they do. And, you know, I, um, and so I can see a priest like character, someone who's a, capable of wielding divine magic or has that spark of divinity within them being like something else has to be going on. Like who made those gods, right? Like how did they come about? Like what's the real truth of behind the cosmos of D and D because mm-hmm. like, your average CR zero peasant or store, you know, commoner or even even a, you know low level scholars like like they don't they're not privy to everything that's in the DMG and the monster manuals and the spells. You know, like for a lot of D and D worlds, the ability to travel to other planes and to talk to the entities there, like there might not be anyone on the planet capable of doing that, depending on the world. And and I see this kind of character working best in that framework where you can't just dial up the outer planes with a contact other planes spell because like no one knows how to anymore or 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 the people who are capable of it there there's only a handful of them and they're not just casting it for anybody um and so someone who's there who like is tapped into the divine but wants to know what the truth is how come there are some gods that don't need worshipers how come there are some gods that seem to have a greater power than others why do you know what's going on uh with the mm-hmm. uh, you know out there and like i don't know that to me brings back some of that um sort of my conception of, of you know religious belief as, as someone who's like actively searching and looking for something and actively looking to like fulfill a need within themselves through this practice you know, mm-hmm. and, and in that practice, finding some sort of truth and uh, and benefit. And yeah, I really like it. Besides, it's a little weird. You know, they're not like, you know, in a priestly hierarchy, you know, they, they don't have the, mm-hmm. don't necessarily have the robes and the trappings of a cleric, you know? No, like I, I, I can see something like this, like a mist, like a mystic or whatever, like, uh, like almost like shamanistic even. Uh, like they could, they could be like, review, you know, read the, read the, the stars and, and whatever, um, because their, their God is not, or where they get their, their power from isn't as defined. So mm-hmm. it is more about searching. Uh, and, uh, uh, and like you said, I can see this being a little bit more faith-based slightly, like, mm-hmm. like you, uh, like you said, trust. But but in this one, I can actually see like, well, I have faith that I'm getting my power from somewhere, but I'm still looking. 
like right yeah to, to find out what is behind that power um right so right. uh because I, I, I you like could just that. stop worshiping a different god and still like i you know, to step aside from the, the fiction of it a minute like we all know why right like if your cleric stopped worshiping the god that they did if your paladin did and they lost all their powers then for a lot of groups that's just not an enjoyable experience and mm -hmm. uh, while pa prior versions of DD did used to have provisions for like yeah what happens when your god abandons your cleric which spells can you cast and can you not um like that's done away with and so but it's created this sort of game environment which influences the fictional environment because like a cleric's a cleric they have divine magic like they don't even need to worship a god they can just mm -hmm. believe in a force um yeah. and so something must be going on so like i also kind of like the fact that this character archetype uh is a bit metagaming right like the ultimate expression okay, well. of this character archetype is to learn that they're in a game <laughs> <laughs> you know? Life is game. What's, what's the higher we reality the bones for this of fate. character <laughs> Right, yeah. yeah. What's the high, the higher beings play toying with our lives? <laughs> we are but vessels for higher beings. Even even they have a life. hierarchy. <laughs> One yeah. of them is the master. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that is the god of all. Right. Yes. I only he is only known by two letters D and. Uh -huh. um, yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had an yeah. NPC that so, worshipped me before. But that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I do remember that. Um, yeah, that was just that was just brown nosy. Uh, <laughs> um, so then we go kind of from the opposite of that a little bit to what I see. Um, uh, we go to a more of like a like a spiritual mediator, like a mm -hmm. or like when I think of this, I think of like the the oracles from like three hundred. Like you yeah, go to them yeah. to find out the god's exact will. Like these are yeah. the people that tell you, oh, you got to do this and you got to do that to make sure everything is within. The guy, th yep. they practice feng shui. It's cosmic feng shui. You got to make sure everything's right and the God's happy. And that's how the blessings flow. Right? Yeah. There, there's a, a spiritual harmony to a D&D &D world. Yeah. And I, the kind of d and I really like is one that looks at the monster manual and goes, this is a book of little gods, right? Like there's a lot of creatures in that book that could stand in for just sort of spirits and and powers you know like who's to say that a water weird doesn't like live in a river and is that river's sort of guardian spirit or a treant in a stretch of forest or dryad or something like especially like looking at the elementals the fae some of the undead they have a way of being sort of recast uh, and and having a place in the world as, as sort of like lower ranking gods and then there's a hierarchy of up to cr whatever and then the divine ranks and demigod and lesser god and all that right and like that the priest in that sense is just someone that knows how to navigate these relationships and they understand that like this specific spirit as a catch-all term for these different kinds of monsters like yeah it has this history with the people these are the things that the locals do to propitiate it to show that they respect that what it is because the other thing about the D, D world is like a lot of these spirits living cheek by jowl with creatures that just looking at their game stats they could sneeze and they'd die <laughs> right like mm -hmm. you know when you think about some of the things that say even just like low cr fey or elementals or like can do and then look at a commoner right like understand that the commoner stat block represents the overwhelming majority of the creatures yeah. that are in this world and like yeah that right a cr2 or three creature might as well be a god right for all the power that it has to influence that that commoner's life and the priest just knows how to navigate that they they are the intermediary they manage things they make sure that everything is is uh is going well and that's from both mm -hmm. the local little level making sure that the elemental that lives in this river or this spring or underneath this hill or the the you know the sprites that live in that wood or the ghosts that haunt that graveyard are all just everybody's fine the all proper offerings have been made proper respect has been shown up to like no i i'm, I'm the chief priest for my entire you know nation and it's my job to like make sure that the you know that everything we do is in accordance with the divine laws of the gods that we mm -hmm. worship and like be given that we worship multiple and those laws are 
interwoven and interconnected and you know it complicated like you know i to me that's much more real and much more like impactful to world building than the siloed collection of monotheisms that a lot of um yeah. D, D worlds are yeah and 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 while i do think fifth edition is set up to thrive more in what we're talking about considering they got rid of you know oh i'm a priest of torm i'm a priest of helm and now sure. you're you know i i follow you know i'm a, cl a life cleric i'm a mm -hmm. war cleric and it's more about concepts therefore you can kind of play looser with which god you actually get your power from and it's more about yeah, yeah. well i'm praying to tempest right now because we are literally about to go into battle but once that <laughs> battle is done i'm going to pray to helm or torm that yeah. you know we the survivors or the people we take prisoner you know we care for them we treat them properly you know that kind mm -hmm. of thing where you, everything is just and right and you can still sure. stay within your concept but but staying on the kind of the the mediator the manager like i can totally see them like they're just going around casting augury and and sure. they are the ones contacting other plane to find out like yeah. at each moment all right we're about to do this council let's make sure we got wheel or woe here we're good you know right yeah that, that, i'm glad you brought up augury because it is this is one of those things where i i change how the spell works whenever you know i'm dming and move away from the having a dm try to predict what's about to happen um and more just like is the current course we're on does it align with my deity's goals and it's yeah. a quick it's a it's literally a way that the, the player can check in with the dm and just go hey am i at risk is what we're doing does it align with the you know my god's goals and and what they would like for me to be doing and like if you're in, if you've got a player who's like super into like playing that connection between mortal and divine augury cast that way like are we on the right track for this specific divine being as opposed to like is this going to be good going to be bad because my personal experience with augury is that it's both that every <laughs> the only answer that makes sense is both <laughs> <laughs> could go either way i don't yeah. don't know how the dice are gonna roll <laughs> that's that's life you could you could have you could find whoa when you just get up to go get a glass of water you could stub your toe you could trip you could, you know, I mean, right yeah yeah life, yeah life is uh, both, life is both uh, you know, both. <laughs> so let's take off that splinter off that concept to to one that i think people uh, especially if you've read the dragon lance series uh but the the restorer the one the, the 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 gods have been gone for a while or maybe they never were there and this is like this is your first cleric this is your herald right. right yeah 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 i really i really like a herald or a um you know it's some, something new and the the cool thing about um you know those the, like dragons of autumn twilight and and the the that set up for the world of like the gods left this place they cast it down they threw a, a you know they dropped a meteor on it created a new ocean you know all <laughs> yeah. the dragons are gone you know like they left and like they've we've had to just deal with life without having clerics and priests and, and the like divine casters and so like either you're like you know coming back and saying like no i represent them they they are coming back the period of of, of uh, purification and punishment is over i'm the new herald i'm you know it's me going to start the, the new order um that's really cool that that requires some work with the dm and sort of world building um but if you didn't want to go that far as to like say there's no gods and this one's the first because just like i'm just I'm new like i represent a new god maybe they're not from around here maybe they're like someone that that's newly arisen to the pantheon someone who used to be mortal and is now not <laughs> you know they're not quite a full-fledged god uh in the classic sense but are on their way up an up-and-comer and you're like you know one of the first uh to get in on it <laughs> ground ground <Yeah>. floor <laughs> yeah the ground floor of this new god startup let me tell you what this has <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go back and go back to the Billy Mays voice. Um, uh, anyway, uh, but yes, like th this whole concept, though, like you, you could, you could actually, you know, couple this with a uh, with a previous uh, concept, the proto godling. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. you, you could talk Certainly. about this god in the third person, but the whole time be talking about yourself, and yeah. just never let that out. You know, this is yeah. the, I'm I'm a herald of a new, of a new coming. This this god will be here soon. 
And you, so you're constantly, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy as long as you stay alive and keep, keep quote unquote winning or whatever you want to sure. call it, uh, spreading, yeah, yeah. whatever, leveling up. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the whole idea of like a, like a new concept or a, a new God, I've always loved that idea. Um, it's, it's, it's rife with, uh, with the same kinds of like, um, uh, drama and, 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 uh, built-in role-playing hooks that you're going to get with, with almost any of these, but more so like if there's something new, whatever is old is going to be, uh, not react well because right. that, that represents something new taking away from the old or changing. The old and, and, yeah. And so in, in whatever facet or form that looks, you're going to get friction. You're going to get drama. Therefore you're going to get hopefully good gaming out of it because, and that's why we like talking about these concepts like this is because you want to try to put as much into it without effort, right? Like yeah. you don't, you don't want to just write in, Oh, in my backstory, I pissed off these people and now they're mad at me because of X. It's like, no, no, no. I'm the herald of a new God. These people are going to be pissed off regardless. You get, you right. still get to decide DM how they react, but you're yeah. giving the DM just, fodder conflict because yeah. you as the yeah. player like yeah i want it i want this i want that attention yeah. that's exactly what i'm going for and so yeah your your dm will love you for this uh if, if yeah. you can build yeah, in you're... some kind of uh, concept like this yeah if you're really going for that character driven kind of game it, it can be a real uh, asset and, and one thing that i'm that occurs to me now like some of these you don't even need to be talking about like divine caster type classes this could just be like a battle master fighter and this is the sort of explanation for why they get so good why they can survive falls why they can take so much punishment like in some ways just the advancing through levels kind of creates this weird narrative dissonance in the world where it's like you know this, this is you know you see, you're clearly a being who's risen above mortal limits you know mm -hmm. just by, by, by virtue of having levels and this is a good way of just sort of like explaining that and saying like, yeah, I, I have this, I'm this good at fighting because I'm the new God of war, you know, or something like that, you know? Um, so yeah, that, I'm, I like, I like this one. This is a fun one. Oh, it's, We're all just oh, it's a fun one. Bud, budding little gods. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and moving to our last, uh, our last one here. Uh, I, I do love this concept because this is how I was raised uh, a little bit. You gotta, these are for all your, your maters out there, your martyr gods. Or whatever, sure. but you're, you're, you're penitent priest. You're one that is taking on all of the wrongness in the world and just, yeah, just funneling it into their, their divine power. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, the, a sin eater, right. Someone yeah. that, that either takes on, uh, you know, someone else's evil and, and like removes it from them and then suffers the punishment themselves or mm -hmm. or like e either in like a literal sense metaphorical maybe it like changes them i could see a barbarian being really good at this it's like that's a, the source of these sort of mindless rages they go into as 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 the the pain and suffering that they've taken on um you know manifests but it could, you could easily go with monk or something like that too as as you know their their discipline of themselves lets them like take on this metaphysical debt you know and mm -hmm. like to me the basis for this is like there's alignment in D, D. like you can like it or not i don't always play with it but it's there and it has yeah. definite uh you know uh, guidelines boundaries for what's evil what's good etc and like so if it's possible for like mortals to commit acts of evil like objective evil and then be like oh i, I don't want that like I don't, I don't want to end up in that in the devil's camp you know when i die then like some way of of of, of like purifying a soul or like seeking you know uh, penance or something like suggests mm -hmm. that there's these must be some kind of way to do that and this is a concept that kind of fits that where it's like someone voluntarily does it they go to a village and, and hear the villagers confessions of, of you know things that they think they've done wrong or and now you've got to deal with it you've, you've done this favor for them you've performed this spiritual service for them mm -hmm. and like that's where you're drawing your power from um i think it's i think it's really an interesting uh subject of uh for a character concept simply because it's like 
taking the idea that like good and evil in a D&D world exist and how do regular people deal with that fact, right? Like how do they live with that? <laughs> Well, I mean, definitely um, seeing this. I mean, we're talking we're, we're talking about priests. Like, I did it with a paladin with Tobias, mm -hmm. and we've talked about this before. My guy did a bunch of evil to get this ring off. Yeah. And so when he gets done with it, he goes to the church and and redeems himself. He became a paladin because I was it, it was I was suited yeah, yeah. for that because I was a big badass fighter. But still, right, right. like this is a, one of those things where like if your character, whether they're a fighter or whatever and they do something awful and you want to find a meaningful way to role play this and you're like sitting there looking at cleric going like oh that wouldn't be bad think about it that way you became right. a priest to atone for whatever it is that you did and so now yeah. you have that interplay that that balance that you have have you done enough to opt to right the wrong to to get the red out of your ledger so to speak like yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's it's a fun way or you know it's a good way to to use game mechanics like multi-classing or whatever sure however you want to look at it um and Custom and key. just go ahead and do that yeah yeah see like an oath of redemption paladin fitting the concept yeah. well oh, totally. as well you know yeah. that's what tobias would be now you know <laughs> yes sure yeah <laughs> the, the the ex the ex-paladin is like oh i gotta i gotta you know repent and, and make amends and the church is like nope sorry you have to go to the druids you know mm -hmm. <laughs> they're the only ones who are going to be able to accept you <clears throat> you know and, and offer you a way for spiritual uh cleansing um so yeah I, like this is just one of those things where i, I think D, D cosmology is weird in that that there are planes where this is the evil plane many of them there's the good planes you know and like there's a soul that comes from the positive energy plane and manifests in the material world as a body as a person and it continues on afterwards and like those souls end up somewhere that can be detected and identified as good or evil or some combination thereof so like how in the world do these mortals who don't always have access to alignment detection spells because there really aren't any anymore, despite what the names say. Um, and you're like, they've got to find some way to have like a functional morality and, and system for conceiving their place in this cosmos. And mm -hmm. someone around who goes like, yeah, I'll make sure that you end up where you're supposed to end up. I'll make sure that just the daily accruals of little evils that you can't really, you know, there's a reason we don't have angels around here. They burn you for this. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah. you're mortal, imperfect, oops, you know, uh, you can't say like when you go and meet them, when you travel to their plane, they're not going to immediately destroy you because of the, the taint of just daily mortal life. And mm -hmm. um, some a character concept that's like that has, there's a, there's a lot of reasons why they would be pursuing big evils, right? There's a lot of reasons they'd be trying to like save the world or or fight the big bad guy or whatever because like there's a lot of suffering there that they can alleviate and, yeah. and uh maybe even redeem the villain themselves that'd be pretty cool you know hey hey it's not about winning or losing but it's about the evil you redeemed along the way jim there you go there you go <laughs> Here on economy and religion, <laughs> on web D. Got a D and D economy podcast. That's too much. We, yeah, too much. Oh God. We're gonna talk about the the way that the identify spell breaks the game world's economy, or something like that. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. How does the spell know it's a hundred that that pearls worth a hundred gold pieces? <laughs> <laughs> Based on what exchange rate? <laughs> yeah. Does the spell know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're in this country, so it's technically worth 75 gold pieces. But if we were right, to go yeah. like two days up the coast, 120. Yeah. yeah. Like, does it know what market a it's in? Stock market episode or a DD <laughs> stock market game? Oh, geez. Speculative spell component speculation. I want it. <laughs> Bagwano <Yeah>. is up. <laughs> right, Bagwano's up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that expedition like, found oh, a shit. layer of dire doom bats. Yeah. It's going to be another 70 years for Bat Guano for the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs>